to our 2024 showcase from the Rochers 8 Centre here in London. Thanks for joining us. And what a better way to start than with an uplifting performance of Millicent James's new piece, Finding Your Home. We had a wonderful year in 2023, celebrating National Youth Choir's 40th year anniversary and embracing lots of changes and new opportunities. And 2024 seems like it's going to be just as exciting as National Youth Choir continues to evolve. We've had a lot of new developments on the horizon, including new projects, new programmes, new recordings, and we're expanding our brilliant SING programme to areas in the northwest of England and in the Midlands. Over the next hour, we are going to share with you what we've been doing this year, our experiences, and showing some of the brilliant new music we've created with the young composers. The Emerging Professional Artists Programme sits alongside all of the National Youth Choir's activities throughout the year as a core part of our ongoing work to reach a wider audience. As the organisation heads into the next 40 years, we want to make sure that the National Youth Choir remains relevant in the sector and representative of the young people who are in it. As ever, huge thanks are due to the team behind the showcase, including the fellows, young composers and conductors you'll see, plus the production team. Thanks once again to the Watchers 8 Centre and to our funders and supporters of our Emerging Professional Artists Programme. Right, on with the show. Welcome, welcome. We are the Young Composers and Fellowship of 2023. Woo! We're going to share with you the experience of our year as emerging professional artists with the National Youth Choir, starting with Emily Varney. How has being a fellow prepared you for what you are doing now? I think being part of the fellowship meant that I spent a whole year learning that being a portfolio artist isn't just viable, it's a real asset. Um, I definitely spent a lot of my time working out the different strengths that I had as a singer and as a conductor and a workshop leader, and then worked out how they translate 
all into each other and I definitely feel more confident now going into new places and offering my perspective on, on whatever is happening there, which is nice. Um, and Antonio, um, can you talk a little bit about your work in education with the fellowship? Sure. So over this fellowship year, we've had the chance to observe, learn from, and really work with some, some of the top choral leaders. You know, I've had the chance to go into some schools, run some choir workshops. I've got to go to all parts of the north with the learning and engagement teams. So it's been a really good experience. We've also had a conducting masterclass at, at the Royal Academy of Music. And all these experiences will aid me in becoming a better choral leader and conductor. Speaking of conducting, Serena, how has being a fellow enhanced your skills as a conductor? Thanks, Antonio. Um, so I think the fellowship has really improved my confidence as a choral leader. I feel more able to stand in front of any group of singers of different vocal abilities and backgrounds and um, create enjoyable music making. Um, I found the Royal Academy of Music Partnership Day really useful in getting some improvements on my um, conducting, which I've been able to transfer into my work with workplace choirs and community choirs. So yeah, I've really, really enjoyed the fellowship. So Chris, could you please give us the goss on the composers? Um, what was it like working with them this year? It was horrible. I mean... <laughs> Just look at them, they're such a terrifying bunch. Um, yeah, it's been a torturous, torturous year. No, it's, uh, in all seriousness, it's been a real privilege. Um, I mean, it's slightly daunting, I think, when you approach any new work and um, having the opportunity to work alongside the people who are sort of bringing that to fruition is, is, is a real privilege. Um, you often find yourself, when you're doing any sort of choral singing, that there are times when you think, I wonder, I wish I knew what was going through the composer's mind, you know, in this particular time. And we've had the opportunity to actually ask them, um, which I think is quite a rare treat. And having things, you know, tailored for what we enjoy singing, you know, our particular sound, working with people who are, you know, fantastic musicians and singers in their own right, and bringing that to their pieces um, has been a real honor. And for me, it's been a particular um, privilege as someone who works with young people who want to compose for voices or want to try out different things or not sure about how to work with choirs for the first time. I think you can point to the fabulous works that um, our composers have made this year and really show them that it's, you know, it can be really exciting and it's, a, it's an evolving and, and living um, dimension of music, which is a great thing to, to be a part of. So it's, it's been a real honor. Um, speaking of composers, I think it's time we grilled them a little bit as well. Alex, how has being a part of the scheme influenced your current work as a composer? Well, Chris, it's influenced my work as a composer in that um, I've, it's just been a great experience. Um, it's been a really uh, unique experience for me because I've been able to make, tailor make a piece for um, both the National Youth Choir and the National Youth Choir Fellows. And, with the National Youth Choir Fellows, it was such a collaborative process and I was able to um, make a, pe a text with them and with my wonderful collaborator, Alice Frecknell, um, about being old and then being young and, you know, co-collaborate and co-create sounds that went actually into the piece. And that's not something I've had before. It's been really nice to actually have a dialogue with people. Um, and it's also been really unique to work with this fantastic group of people who bring so much artistry to what they do, so much intention, so much focus and so much passion. It's really been an honor. Um, speaking of honor, uh, Emily Hazrati, <laughs> who I know really well. Uh, could you tell me about any personal highlights you've had this year? I know, for instance, your piece for the Fellows was, was also a really collaborative process, and um, I'd love to know a little bit more about how that collaboration developed. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> yeah, so with my piece for the Fellows, um, I had the chance to collaborate and create text in a very different way to what I'm used to. Um, I tend to work with um, writers quite a lot. I brought in my writer collaborator, Nasli Tabatabe Hossenbash, um, to write the text for the National Youth Choir 18 to 25 
piece I wrote. Um, but for the fellows, I really wanted to find a way of um, giving them ownership of what I'd written. And so what I did was gave them a prompt, um, basically encouraging them to come up with ideas and thoughts on the subject of home, what that means to them. And I used uh, responses to both um, create a text um, using fragments of their ideas and also as, an, so, as a source of inspiration for the musical fabric of the piece. And it meant that I could work with the fellows in a really personal way, despite the fact that um, the recording process itself is quite um, efficient, as we all know. Um, and yeah, it was just an honor to be able to, um, I suppose, work with them in such a meaningful way. And I think um, that's been a real highlight of this scheme for me, the fact that it um, allows us to work together in such a um, personal way. Um, Millicent, um, so I know that your fellowship piece, Finding Your Home, also uh, takes inspiration from our cohort. Um, and celebrates friendship, ultimately. Um, tell us a bit more about your creative process and how this emerged from our time together in Oldborough and our residencies with National Youth Choir. Thank you, Emily, <laughs> for the amazing question. Yeah, so, I don't know. When it comes to writing, I'll probably go through about three different ideas before eventually I'd settle on something. So initially I had probably quite a more energetic, I mean, I can just do a, a quick example, I guess, because I've struggled to describe things in words, but it was just something that was like, but then I was like, this is a bit too difficult to, <laughs> um, to do that. And then there was another idea, which I've forgotten. Um, but then just our time in Oldborough was just like so, so uplifting. And there were so many epiphanies that happened that week, just with sharing such amazing times. Because we had the, um, we had, there was the summer residency at Rickmansworth that we had where all of us were together. And that was really lovely because we were able to workshop, workshop our ideas which was just really nice. And just spending time together is like always really joyful and um, really, really, really nice. And friendship is really good. Um, <laughs> and then when we moved on to our um, uh, residency in Oldborough, that again was so uplifting. And just, we went to the beach, had fish and chips, and it was so lovely. And then um, there was a mulberry bush. There was quite a few mulberry bushes at um, the Red House with the Britain Piers. And we had mulberries, we had lots of food, we had a composer come down with me. So each night one of us was cooking a different dish and it was so good. It was just so, like the sense of joy and community was really there. And it was just a really warm and quite a unique experience. Like I don't think I'd ever felt so settled in myself apart from that entire week, just it was like, really coming out of my shell quite significantly. And then, yeah, so the beach was awesome. And then we were just, what was it? We did like a bunch of things. I mean, there was like songs that we kind of came up with, <laughs> which was a lot of fun as well. Um, and then we got to see National Youth Choir perform as well, which is just amazing. And just such a, I don't know, Choral writing is such a physical experience and it's just really, really lovely. So um, yeah, there was a lot of sense of community and joy when it came to putting this piece together and just trying to enhance and amalgamate all those feelings into one place, I'd say. So, well, how did the three madrigals that we're gonna hear next emerge as a collaboration with the fellows? Yes, yeah, so uh, th this goes right back to the start of the scheme um, when we all met up in uh, Umbrella Studios and that's when we first found out about the celebration theme for this year. Uh, and so we all had to bring along a piece that meant something to us, a choral piece uh, around the theme of celebration. And uh, one of the first things that came to my mind was a, a madrigal called Sing We Enchant It. 
um, just because it, it felt to me like a kind of genre of a historical genre of music that really had celebration at its heart and was also quite a kind of intimate celebration which I thought was an interesting aspect and so I thought that that kind of style or genre would translate really well into the fellowship piece um, and so I did some research into different magical texts and found three quite contrasting texts that um, reflected that spirit of celebration and intimacy. Um, yeah, so there's three different magical texts that you'll hear next. Um, and I think the one that particularly struck me was the uh, first one, Spring in All Her Glory, that it, it, even though it's a kind of old translation of a magical text, it still has a kind of sense of modernness and freshness that so it was really fun to set it in a new style so now we've heard from everyone in our wonderful cohort and onwards with the show I think the biggest impact it has had on my life is that I've been exposed to a much bigger range of people, much bigger range of things that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do, such as conducting excellent singers, meeting music publishers, uh, getting to lead rehearsals on choir courses. I think the best thing about being on this Young Composer Scheme is just the range of experiences you get on this course. We get tons of technical advice on how to work with singers, how to uh, produce the best sound out of them, but also there's a lot of um, support about how we can make the best thing for us as composers and find something that's authentic. The most special part about Nash Youth Choir is how inclusive and how welcoming it is as an organisation. There's loads of opportunities beyond the organisation itself, to meet people, to share ideas and also to work with other people as well. They're not looking for a fully formed professional musician, it is a training scheme and I think if you have potential and you have the drive to do it, you'll get so much out of it. Every heart and every heart, 
The National Youth Choir has really put me on the map. It was the first organisation to really um, pioneer my music. And since then, I've been really lucky to work with the BBC Singers, the Royal Northern Symphonia Chorus. I've worked with St Paul's Cathedral as part of the BBC Proms. And I'm extremely excited to be back with the National Youth Choir, 9 to 15 choirs, for whom I'm writing two pieces at the moment. From the programme, I feel like I am now part of this organisation where it's really a massive family where people just keep coming back and you're a part of something much bigger. So I did a bit of work with some of the choirs while I was a fellow, but I'm coming back again this summer to work with one of the choirs for a week as an assistant conductor, which is really exciting. I use the things I learn on my fellowship in all of the work that I do every day with my own choirs and through my own singing. I remember standing in front of a huge choir that was the National Youth Choir and thinking, my goodness, this is incredible because it was after a, t a period of time where nobody was singing or performing, you know. Um, and that was the, hearing that choir, the power of the choir for me was, was the incredible memory that, you know, I'll cherish. I've really enjoyed all of the opportunities I've had to get in front of singers. One of my favourite moments has been uh, putting together the finale piece for the showcase, um, which was an amazing experience. My plans and aspirations are hopefully to keep composing. Um, I love writing for choirs, but I also love writing for my own instrument, the piano, and for orchestras and chamber ensembles. So that's, that is uh, what I aspire to do, to continue writing music and performing music. In the future, I would like to be conducting uh, professional ensembles, so perhaps uh, the BBC Singers, uh, or maybe conducting at an opera house somewhere. It has been absolutely a life-changing scheme for me, and I hope that it will be for many, many more to come.
Hello again. Sadly, for the 2023 cohort, uh, which Emily and I have been involved in, our time on the programme is coming to an end soon. But we are very, very excited to pass over the baton to this new 2024 cohort. Hey. Very exciting. So we're going to ask some questions, find a, a, out a little bit more about yourselves. So Imogen, you were a former member of the National Youth Choirs, which was great. Do you have any memories from your time when you've been in it that particularly stand out to you? Yeah, definitely. So I think I first joined the organisation when I was about 16, 17. And um, I remember my first kind of spring course um, being introduced to some amazing music by composers like Roxana Panufnik. And it was just so exciting to um, sing some really difficult music with some other amazing singers. I think it's just the kind of thing you wouldn't have the opportunity to do in a normal kind of choral setting. So that kind of first inspired me to keep going. And then I joined again in um, the 18 to 25s choir when I was about 20 years old. And we were rehearsing for uh, the series of concerts at the Royal Abbott Hall, the carols. And um, I was lucky enough to audition and get a solo for the uh, Once and Royal David City to start off the whole concert. And it's just not every day you get the opportunity to sing a solo in the Royal Albert Hall. So that was just amazing. Um, my family were there watching me. So I was just really grateful to the National Youth Choirs for having that opportunity. So yeah, it's just really exciting to be a part of the organization again. Yeah, that's so lovely. Um, and then Adam, can you talk to us a bit about um, what you find most rewarding about what you do? Yeah, of course, yeah. I think for me, um, all the magic happens in the rehearsal process. Um, I think as individuals, as musicians, we go into, into rooms um, as, as people, uh, individual people, but then we come together as a group. Um, I think there's something really magical about that. And for me, it's that process, that rehearsal process that is really exciting. Um, I'm really looking forward to spending this year um, as a group with all these people, um, seeing how we form as a group, uh, but also um, working with the rest of National Youth Choir and seeing where that takes us. Lovely, that's great. And then Daniel, do you have any choral experiences from your life which are huge highlights for you so far? Wow, what a question. Um, uh, yes, I do. Um, my choral highlight has been uh, as, as a chorister with the CT of Birmingham Symphony Chorus singing at the proms, we did Mahler's Second Symphony. And this was a very special concert because it was the very end of a great year I had in Birmingham. So when I was singing this gorgeous piece in this fantastic building, everything just came to my mind, all these lovely people I met, all these experiences I had, uh, the new skills I had, even my English improved. Um, so, so that was that was the the combination of many things. So I'm pre I'm pretty sure that this year I'm going to have a new highlight for my life in the National Youth Choir because I'm surrounded by amazing people and uh, looking ahead of so such an amazing opportunity that, that we are going to have. So I'm sure being a fellow of the National Youth Choir will beat that experience and will be my new one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that will happen. That's very, very exciting. And then we've got our final fellow, Olivia. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what you're hoping to gain from the fellowship this year and how is that going to tie into all of your work outside of it? Great, thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, I think I've realised over the last few years the importance of having a portfolio career as a musician. Um, and I think the fellowship really prepares us for that reality. Um, it's a really holistic approach to training us to do basically everything, which is so exciting. Um, so I think I'm mostly just hoping to gain confidence in as many areas as possible, just to prepare me to go into such a variety of settings with such a variety of responsibilities. Um, and that really feeds into some of the work I'm doing at the moment um, in prisons um, and with school choirs and community choirs, um, which is really exciting. Um, I'm also doing some research at the moment on um, the way that singing with other people can impact our well-being. Um, so being able to engage with so many young people who enjoy singing and really want to do it will be so interesting in that respect. So yeah, it's such an amazing opportunity and so excited to be part of it. 
Great, so these are our fellows. That's so exciting. And then Will, I think you're gonna to talk to some of the composers now. Yes, so now over to our wonderful new group of composers for the National Youth Choir. So firstly, Anya, um, I was wondering what elements make writing for voices uniquely appealing and stimulating in your artistic practice? Yeah, thank you. Um, I really love working with text. Um, I think um, kind of choosing a text and getting inside the text um, is probably like the most exciting part of the process. Um, and you can really imbue the music with the kind of all of the semantic meanings of everything. Um, so that's really the, the kind of first part about why I love working with choirs. Um, the other really amazing part is just the sheer joy that comes from working with the choir, like the collaboration with so many people um, is just incredibly exciting. Um, and the voice is, in my opinion, the most versatile instrument, like there's so much you can do with it. Um, and I think having the opportunity to work collaboratively with such a huge choir um, is just Absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's really, really exciting. So. Awesome. Yeah, we'll look, we'll look forward to seeing um, what texts you approach for your pieces. Um, great. And now, Cameron, um, I was wondering, how does your very varied career as a composer and as a musician in general influence your work specifically as a composer? Yeah, so currently at the moment, um, I'm a North Wales-based composer with quite a diverse portfolio of um, jobs at the moment. So I work as a educator, as a piano teacher and composer uh, teacher. Outside of that, I'm a workshop facilitator and work with the BBC National Orchestra Wales and other organisations with their learning engagement department. And I think what really hi it highlights to me is the importance of collaboration with other people um, whether that is amazing performers like the fellows or we're going into schools and finding that light bulb moment when they suddenly realize that creativity isn't just this mystical high art form is really inspiring to me but also it made me realize for composers we write for people and it, it's really reinforced when I compose I always have a specific sound related to the person that I'm writing for, whether that is an instrumentalist or a specific singer. I think those things are really integral to how I write. Brilliant. Um, and now, Cristalla, you're also a singer yourself in, with both experience in classical and pop music. I was wondering how important is the voice in your compositional process? Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, as a singer, the voice really influences um, not only the way I create music, but also, yeah, the, the sounds of my music stylistically. Um, so I love composing through improvising at the piano and just singing melodies above that. I'm always just, yeah, creating lyrical content as well. So I think singing and the voice is just very second nature to me. Um, I also really love as I do classical and pop, and I, I love all areas of singing. I like to create interesting sort of cross-genre blends and exploring using different voice types, um, whether that be combining specialisms together like opera, musical theatre and pop, or coming up with an interesting blend within one voice. Um, one of my biggest inspirations is Kate Bush, and I think she's a great example of a sort of light classical pop voice and she really brings a lovely theatrical nature to her music. So um, yeah, I just really like exploring all different voice types and I think that definitely influences my style. Cool, well, I'm sure in a few years, um, you and Kate will be collaborating. <laughs> um, brilliant, and uh, so Jamie, you're um, new to the National Youth Choir family. Um, what are you looking forward to most about working with the organization for the first time? Yeah, thanks for it, it. It really feels like a family already. We've only been here you know, a day or two and we're really connecting. It's really lovely. And it feels a space where collaboration feels kind of easy and natural and uninhibited. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that 
aspects of it and working with these lovely people and writing specifically for the fellows voices as well is a really nice collaborative thing and also the younger voices of the national youth choir um and seeing you know, how they react to what we what we throw at them is exciting um and i'm a conductor as well and i'd like to pick up some you know tips as well on vocal leadership and working with younger voices and i think like many people in our industry we're sort of wrestling a bit with the question of, you know, how do we make choral music really healthy in this country and classical music more widely? And I to sort of, if there's an organization to immerse yourself in for a year to sort of think about that, then this seems to be the one. So I'm really looking forward to learning about that as well. Awesome stuff. Well, thank you so much for telling us a bit about yourself. It's so exciting and you're going to have such an amazing year. I'm very jealous. Mm. But um, yeah, it's <laughs> going to be really, really fun. And we're really excited to let you all know that we have a new emerging artist programme happening mm. at the moment. And we're really excited to welcome our two new young conductors. So that's Gabrielle Chudy and Francesca Richards to the National Youth Choir family. Great, thank you. We'll look forward to meeting them soon. Now it's just to say, I hope you very much enjoy our combined finale performance later. Hello. Hello! We are nearing the end of our 2024 showcase and we would like to thank everyone watching online. We'd also like to thank all those involved in making the showcase happen. The singers, conductors, composers and production team and our industry friends, the Votches 8 Foundation, for hosting us in this beautiful venue in the heart of London. We'd also like to thank National Youth Choir members and participants, parents, carers, audiences and supporters and all National Youth Choir staff who work across the year and organisation to make events like this happen. Our thanks must also go to all of our programme partners, supporters and donors who make all this vital work happen. To end our showcase, we will all be performing Christina Arakelian's An Ode to the World, commissioned by the BBC singers who our wonderful Nick Chalmers also conducts. This performance will demonstrate the legacy of our young composers and fellowship programme, as not only was Christina a former emerging professional artist in the National Youth Choir community, but so was Olivia Shorten, who will be conducting this very special performance. Thank you and, and enjoy. enjoy. to see 